So, I'm going to be honest, it's overhyped. Now, don't get me wrong, it is going to work. But I think people are taking it a little bit too extreme. So welcome to a card review for Francisco Foul Marauder. It's one black and one generic for a legendary creature bird pirate. I love parrots, don't get me wrong. It is a 0-1 with flying and Francisco Foul Marauder can't block. Now, whenever one or more pirates you control deal damage to a player, Francisco explores. And it has partners, so it can team up with other commanders to basically gain more color identities. But before we get to color identities, we have to talk about this combo you see right here. I got Assault's Cauldron together with Walking Ballista. Now what you need to do is get your Walking Ballista into your grave, that's easy, just cast it without paying mana for it. It will instantly die because it comes into play as a 0-0 without any counters on it. Then cast your Assault's Cauldron exiles Walking Ballista and put a counter onto Francisco Foul Marauder. Now Francisco will have the Walking Ballista remove a counter to deal a damage ability, but also still have the explore ability, which means you can do actually infinite damage here. Yeah, that's great, that's definitely something. And then you can start combining this partner with various commanders like Krom, suddenly your Grixis, Rograk, your Raktos, Sidar, your Absan, Frasius, your Sultai, Isha, your Esper, and Timna, your Orsov. So depending on what you need, you can do some pretty good things like Krom is color identity, Grixis and card draw. And if you specifically take a look at Grixis, we have 402 game entries, tournament entries of various decks that have played several games and together those various different commanders have achieved an average win rate of 24.48, which is actually kind of good considering. So now I want to say something very important. Just the fact that this can be a Grixis commander means it's already CEDH viable. In fact, I might go as far as to say every possible Grixis commander is more or less CEDH viable just because the access of these color identities, more or less. We can do the exact same thing with Esper, Ishai and uh, Francisco. We have 378 decks that have achieved an average win rate of 22.14, so a little bit less than Grixis. But Esper color identity is still an um, okay win rate. But once again, Grixis is good. Grixis are winning games. If you put this deck together with Francisco and Krom, you are going to get some form of results and some wins just to the fact that you have some really good card potential inside the 99. Regardless of whatever commander you're actually playing. So far so good, it sounds like it's an amazing commander. However, when you have a lot of different Grixis options, how good is it actually? So first and foremost, this combo is not bad. Considering the fact that you have your commander in the command zone, you only need to find Agatha Souls Cauldron and Walking Ballista. You can also cast them a little bit independently, first cast Francisco for 2 mana, and then later cast Agatha Souls Cauldron for another 2 mana. Which means that it's a more convenient mana cost compared to Fasa's console, that is blue, blue, black, that has to be resolved at the spo spot. This could actually win through rule of laws or other stacks effects that's preventing you from casting more than one spell each turn. So I have to say that I do like the combo actually. Artifacts are not that hard to tutor for. Walking Ballista being an artifact and a creature increases the amount of tutors that actually finds it. And Algotta Souls Cauldron is like a decent card in general. I also want to point out that if an opponent actually drops their Walking Ballista into their graveyard, you can use your Agatha Souls Cauldron to remove that, and boom, you have the win actually. Pretty unlikely, but it could happen. Also, in order to have this combo inside your deck, you don't need to commit that much. I mean, you just need tutors for this and fast mana, and you're already playing those things to begin with anyways. So the combo is fine, let's move forward. And this is where things, in my opinion, ah, it's... It, problematic I would say more or less. You see, whenever one or more pirates you control deal damage to a player, Francisco explores. So first of all, I, you can build a pirate tribal deck. I don't personally like that. This will never trigger itself because it's a zero one to begin with, but once you've actually triggered it once, it's going to climb upwards later on. 
Malcolm and Francisco actually will trigger it quite fast, but now you're on Demir, which is, could be fine, I guess. But still, I, I don't see this being anything else than like a 0-1 for 2 mana that is going to enable your Deflecting Swat and Fierce Guardianship early in the game. But other than that, it's basically color identity and a very cheap creature from the command zone. And I personally don't view that good. Like, it's a combo piece, color identity and a two mana creature in the command zone. That's it. Paired with Chrome, suddenly you have a five mana commander that gives you card draw and more colors. So now we're starting to get somewhere. And pair with Frasius, pretty much the same thing. But if you're going to pair this with like Chrome, why not pair Chrome with Tumna? Because here's the true verdict of pretty much every... And this is where people kind of dislike CDH sometimes and where they criticize the format that, yes, there are power creeps, there are like a few things that is extremely strong and a few things that is like okay and function and is, is like in the middle ground. And this is going to be somewhere in the middle ground. Like I personally don't think this is going to push it its way all the way to the top. I think it's going to work out. I think it's going to be like, once again, in the middle ground. But I also want to mention that depending on what you combine it with, like Ishai, Oitai, Dragon Speaker, and Francisco, I, you're getting Esper. But at this point, and you're getting the Agatha Souls Cauldron combo, but at this point, why not play Tumna and Malcolm? That's from the command zone is pretty amazing. You have Tumna that draws cards, and you have Malcolm that generates treasures. Sure, you're gaining a combo by having Francisco instead, but you're losing so much safety from the command zone. The big thing with having commanders that draw cards from the command zone means that you can mulligan down more aggressively. And like, we're discussing the value of having an extra combo inside your deck compared to having safe mulligans. And I'm gonna say that having safe mulligans is a better value compared to having more combos in the 99. And that is my point with Chrome and Tumna instead of Chrome and Francisco as well. Because when you're adding Tumna, you're adding white, which opens the deck into more possibilities like Esper Sentinel. Now you have increased your uh, potential openers a lot more by just having white inside the deck. But also having an early Tumna means that you can use Tumna to draw cards and solve a lot of really sad openers that you sometimes get. Now sure, Chrome and is going to fix some of your openers in this combination, but Tumna makes it even more safe. And the same thing with Frasius as well. So Frasius can team up with Tevesh, that will give him more potential from the command zone. Frasius could uh, team up with Vile Smasher, that will give you red. Now sure, Vile Smasher isn't doing really anything from the command zone, except when he actually ha she has a curiosity on her. But suddenly you're gaining red and that's like a huge upgrade. So my big message basically is that what are you trading away by adding a cool combo to your 99 by having this instead? What other options, what other things are you losing by choosing this partner instead of another potential partner? And that is where I think this Francisco Foul Marauder, the awesome bird, is parrot overhyped. Before we end this video, I would also like to point out a very important message, and that is that everything doesn't have to be the best of the best. You don't have to play the best deck in the format. You should always play what you enjoy the most. And if you think that this parrot, together with whatever cool partner you could think of, is gonna be awesome and enjoyable, and maybe even pirate tribal, who knows, like, go for it. Play Pirate Tribal in CDH and see how it works. Over time, I'm usually collecting data on various tournaments. And eventually, when people have been playing this enough, I will have some results to showcase for you. So when I'm updating my CDH tier list, you will notice the actual performance and how good this actually turned out to be. Maybe I'm wrong, or maybe I'm dead right. In the end, we will see in the future.